Hello and welcome to the Daily Message. Today is Wednesday, April 13th. It is Wednesday of Holy Week and we're so glad that you're here. I'm Pastor Morgan. I'm the intern pastor here at Holy Cross. Uh, as usual, I'm glad you found our channel. You can find links below to subscribe, to donate to Holy Cross. Um, there's, some, there's some good stuff down there, so check it out. Um, and for our devotional time today, we will be in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 13, verses 21 to 26. We're going to talk about Judas today. Uh, it's Holy Week. We are almost upon the three days, starting tomorrow with Monday, Thursday, where we um, look at the end of Jesus' life, leading up to his death, and then his resurrection, of course, on Easter. Uh, so we'll talk about that in just a moment. All right, there's a lot happening at church this week, of course, because it's Holy Week. Um, so first and foremost, let's just kind of walk through the schedule of the week, what's happening. So this is from the newsletter. You can see um, printed on the front all the things that are going on. Um, starting tomorrow with Monday Thursday begins our three days uh, of worship, which is one continuous worship that happens over three days. So um, all of our evening worships this week are at 7.30, so if you're wondering what time things are, 7.30 is your time. Um, so, tomorrow night, Monday, Thursday, 7.30, with anointing of hands and foot washing and communion. We will um, celebrate and remember that. Um, on Good Friday, we actually have two Good Friday worship opportunities. Um, the first is a community Good Friday worship at noon, midday. Um, and this is in conjunction with some other local congregations. Um, every year, um, Holy Cross participates with other local congregations in this community Good Friday worship, and this is our year to host it. Um, so it'll be it'll be a, an interesting one. It'll be creative. Uh, the The title of worship is called um, "And the Veil Was Torn in Two. So if you're looking for a, um, a unique and creative worship experience on Good Friday. Uh, come check it out. It'll be really interesting. I think it'll be a really good experience. So that's on Friday at noon. And then also in the evening on Friday at 7.30, 7.30 is our time, uh, we have our Good Friday Tenembre worship, which you may be familiar with. So you can join us for that as well. Saturday night, uh, we have our Easter vigil at 7.30 p.m. We will begin outside at the fire pit by the labyrinth and make our way around the building for the various aspects of that worship. Um, one thing to note, uh, we are still looking for a fire starter for that. So, uh, like I mentioned, for Easter Vigil, we'll start outside at the fire pit. We need somebody to light a fire for us. <laughs> so, if you are able or interested in um, being a fire starter, and building that and, you know, getting it ready for us um, before 7.30 on Saturday, um, that would be wonderful. Please reach out to myself or Pastor Scott or uh, the office. You can give the office a call or shoot us an email. Um, we're still looking for somebody to do that. So that would be very, very helpful. And we appreciate that, of course. Um, so that's Easter Vigil on Saturday at 7.30. And then, of course, Easter Sunday, this Sunday the 17th, uh, we have Easter worship at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Um, and uh, in between those two, um, at around 9 o'clock, we will have our coffee cake buffet. So that will be in the fellowship hall. Um, if you are able and willing to bring a coffee cake or a dessert to share, uh, please do so. Uh, you can just bring it and drop it off in the fellowship hall. That will be happening between worship um, as a celebration, kind of an in-between of what would normally be our Easter breakfast, but still a way for us to celebrate the day and be together in community. So, coffee cake buffet on Sunday. Then following the 10 o'clock worship, there will be an Easter egg hunt. Um, Kim has a bunch of awesome stuff planned with crafts and Easter egg hunt and great stuff for kids and families and kids of all ages, people of all ages. So uh, if you want to stick around after 10 o'clock for that, um, that should be a lot of fun. We hope to see you there. Um, a reminder as well that our office is closed on Monday, so we will not be here. We will all be sleeping in <laughs> after this long, um, fulfilling but daunting week of Holy Week. It's been a long one for us already. Can't believe it's only Wednesday, but you know what? Um, 
we're looking forward to some rest on Monday. So the office will be closed. Um, so if you call, you won't get anybody. We'll see you on Tuesday after we've had a day to recoup after Holy Week. So just keep that in mind. Um, also on Saturday for the Easter Vigil, forgot to mention this, following the Easter Vigil, um, we will have what we're calling Alleluia a la mode. So uh, we will have um, pie and ice cream and champagne and sparkling juice to ring in the Easter season and celebrate. Um, so if you are coming to the Easter Vigil or you are um, willing to bring a pie to share, uh, we would greatly appreciate that. So we have plenty of pie to go around with our ice cream and other goodies. Um, if you are able to bring a pie, please email Sally and let her know um, so that we make sure we have enough for everyone. But that should be a fun celebration on Saturday. We're looking forward to that. All right, that's all the Holy Week things. Um, watch the happenings for this week um, and your email so that you can get updates on all things um, Easter weekend and um, Holy Week. And again, you can find all of this printed out in the newsletter right on the front page. Um, it'll outline all of that for you so that you, you know what's going on. And we're looking forward to worshiping with you all. Um, another note about worship um, our communion practices have continued to shift a little bit, but for right now, this is what we're doing. We uh, you, Normally, you would come in and you would grab your cup um, from the usher station before you go in and sit down. Uh, now, all of our cups are up front, so um, you don't need to grab anything when you come in. Um, you can just come right in, grab a bulletin, sit down for worship, and um, then we will have the cups up there for you next to the um, the wine and the grape juice when you come up for communion so that you can just grab it right there you don't have to worry about forgetting and bringing it not bringing it up and all that stuff it'll be right there for you so uh, we're trying to make that process run a little smoother um, we're using the cups because we're not doing intention right now so we we don't want anybody dip it in right now um, our healthy worship task force has been really fantastic in keeping us moving um, forward in this pandemic and uh, dipping in and you know taking a chance of us getting our fingers in there is not what we want right now so we are using the cups we will ask you to grab a cup it'll be right there for you um, and we'll pour it in for you so that it's all ready to go for you so uh, just note that those are up front now um, unless you would like to commune from your seat then we will still have the the travel cups the the eucharistables the lunchables whatever you want to call them uh, those will still be there so you can still grab those on your way into worship and commune from your seat that's still an option um, so just know that all right Whew. it's a big week my friends um, I think we're getting through all of the things but you know it's very possible I forgot something and that's okay we will get through it together. Um, all right, let's turn to our devotion for this week. Uh, like I said, we are in um, John 13, verses 21 to 26. And for each day of Holy Week, there are readings assigned. So we have lectionary readings. Our lectionary is kind of our, our master list of readings that we use through the church year. And the lectionary kind of lays out all those readings for us so that uh, we don't have to think about it. We just look at it and say, oh, great, here are the readings for the day. But um, Holy Week, there's readings for every day of the week. Um, normally, it's just on Sundays or, you know, just for the, the high holy days. But there, and actually, there's readings for every day of the year. But for Wednesday of Holy Week... Uh, I didn't know this. This is interesting. Um, this day is sometimes called Spy Wednesday. I have never heard of this before. So I'll read you. This is our Sundays and Seasons book. This is the book we follow that has some, some prayers and resources for worship and our readings for the week. And this is what it says about Spy Wednesday. This day was formerly called Spy Wednesday an allusion to the gospel reading in which Judas is identified as the betrayer of Jesus. As Jesus endured the suffering of the cross, we are called to run the race of life with perseverance, confident of the joy to come. In the three days we begin tomorrow evening, we will journey with Christ from darkness to light, from captivity to freedom, from death to life. This is really interesting to me because Spy Wednesday... Spy Wednesday. So 
I what that says to me is we we are alluding to Judas as a spy, Judas as the betrayer, um, and it gives John thirteen as the reference for the day for that story. So let's just read real quick uh, verses twenty one to twenty six. This is what it says. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. Interesting. So I looked it up because, you know, this is what I do. I looked it up in the other Gospels, and none of the other Gospels play it out in just this way. Um, in Matthew's Gospel, we get a scene of Judas going to the authorities beforehand saying, how much will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? Um, but nothing in which Jesus or the disciples know ahead of time or, or allude ahead of time that they knew Judas was going to be the one. And um, same thing in the Gospel of Luke. We, we don't get a whole lot of, you know, this direct accusing of Judas before it even happens. We just get you know, the title, The Betrayal of Jesus, and then Judas does his thing. And so it's interesting to me that on this Spy Wednesday, this is the story we get of Jesus accusing Judas beforehand, um, before it even, it even happens. Um, and of course, we know how the story plays out. We know that that is true. Um, but I want to challenge us today to think about Judas in a different way. We always think about Judas as the betrayer. That's kind of the title he gets. We think of Judas as the betrayer and Jesus as the betrayed. Uh, that's kind of our traditional interpretation of this. And, and that is true in a lot of ways. Jesus was betrayed by Judas to the authorities, which is ultimately what led to his death. But also we know that Peter's denial, that the disciples fleeing, that those are also betrayals of Jesus. But I want to turn this on its head a little bit. Because I think that in a lot of ways, though Judas is the betrayer, Judas is also betrayed. Judas is betrayed by a system that falsely promises him power and, and status and money. Um, and when he doesn't get that, he is betrayed as well. And he is betrayed by these, these forces of the world or this influence of the world around him to, um, yeah, to play into those systems, to give Jesus up to those systems of power that are at play around them. Um, and I think that for a lot of us, we could think of many experiences in our lives when we were, we were betrayed by someone. And also, I can think of examples for myself of times I have betrayed other people. And um, I think it's it does a disservice to our story and to Jesus and to Judas to um, only think of Judas as a betrayer. Um, because people are more complicated than that, right? We are more complicated than that. We know that, which is why we all need Jesus. And we need Jesus's message of forgiveness and love. Um, and that's what makes stories like this really tough. So, um, I want us to consider that today. Consider Judas as both betrayer and betrayed by a system around him that was um, promising him things that didn't deliver. That uh, he was betrayed by a world that is broken and by powers that are broken. Um, and we say this in our Lord's Prayer as well. Uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We could think of it in a similar way. Forgive us um, of the ways we have betrayed others as well as we forgive those who have betrayed us. 
Um, so food for thought today, a different view on Judas that maybe you haven't thought about before, but an important one, I think, is we think about the, the weight of these days to come and all that, all that these three holy days will bring, um, with the promise of resurrection and hope, but also with the difficulty of betrayal. Um, so consider that today. So we'll enter into a time of prayer. As we pray, we'll, we'll be praying for that. We'll be praying for those who feel betrayed and those who have betrayed. Um, and we'll pray that God be with us in these next three days through Easter. So let's pray together. Holy God, we ask you to come in and enter into our lives and our hearts and our world as we enter into these three holy days. These three days where we remember your death and we celebrate your resurrection. And God be with us as we deal with the difficulty that these three days bring with the weight of the world and the weight of sin and death that we face. God, we, we pray for Judas. We pray for the Judases in our lives. We pray for the Judas within us that we are complicated people and we can be both betrayer and betrayed that multiple things can be true at the same time, and God, that you would not not necessarily, you know, explain it all to us, but just be with us in it as we explore it and we sit with it and we sit with that tension and complexity. God, be with us in these days to come. Carry us through to that Easter day when we can celebrate and live in the hope of resurrection. And in the meantime, help us remember you are with us always. Amen. Thanks for joining us today for this daily message. Remember, be smart, stay safe, love everybody. We'll see you soon. Bye.